I'd like to thank the organizers for the opportunity to present my work today. Um, I'm Mark Kunitomi, and uh, I just finished my PhD in, in Raoul's lab, and I'm staying on to, to finish on up some stuff uh, at UCSF. And today I'm going to talk to you about how the pyronate pathway acts antivirally in the mosquito Aedes aegypti. So in the Andina lab, um, one of the primary aspects of, of research that we do uh, is on antiviral immunity in insects. And one of the most characterized aspects of antiviral immunity in insects uh, is RNA interference, and more specifically, the siRNA pathway. And so I have just a brief overview of the siRNA pathway, uh, generalizable to in insects. Basically, it's initiated um, by the recognition of exogenous long double-stranded RNA uh, by the enzyme DICER2, which cleaves it into approximately 21 base pair siRNAs. These siRNAs are then loaded into Argonaut2, where one strand is selectively retained and utilized to target complementary single-stranded RNAs for cleavage and ultimately degradation. So how can this act antivirally? Well, in order to, to get to that, I'm just going to introduce uh, a generic um, viral life cycle. I'm sure you're all quite familiar with this. Um, but just to highlight that uh, for RNA viruses, replication requires uh, the formation of a double-stranded intermediate. And this double-stranded intermediate is classically a signal to the host uh, of non-self uh, and infection. And so how this works in the context of the siRNA pathway is that this long double-stranded intermediate uh, is recognized by DICER which cleaves it into 21 base pair uh, virally derived siRNAs. And then these siRNAs can be utilized in order to target uh, the genomic RNA for cleavage and degradation, thus inhibiting uh, viral replication. Um, and so if you take mosquito cells, uh, AG2 cells, which are from Aedes aegypti, uh, infect them with an arbovirus, Simbis virus, uh, which is an alpha virus, and then do a size selection for the small RNAs, deep sequence them, and then map them to the viral genome, what you'll see uh, is this characteristic uh, two peaks of, of 21 base pair or 21 nucleotide siRNAs. And you can see that they come uh, from both sides of the genome in an equal distribution, which is strongly indicative of that long double-stranded intermediate being the target of DICER. However, in addition to these siRNAs in mosquitoes, we also observe this larger pool of small RNAs. And these have been observed uh, for many labs uh, using multiple different mosquitoes. Um, but they were indicative of potentially a different form of RNAi uh, known as the pyRNA pathway. And so the pyRNA pathway is much more complex than the siRNA pathway and not really conducive to an explanation within a 10-minute talk. So I'm just going to highlight some of the major differences and uh, similarities between the pyRNA pathway and the siRNA pathway. And, and the first major departure uh, from the siRNA pathway that we find with the pyRNA pathway is that instead of being initiated from exogenous uh, molecules, long double-stranded RNA, the pyRNA pathway is initiated endogenously um, at genomic loci within the host genome um, known as pi clusters. And so instead of uh, the initiation of, of this pathway being from outside of the cell or, or from exogenous sources, it's an endogenous source. So the second difference um, I've already kind of illustrated is that there's a size difference between the small RNAs. Um, and for the pyRNA uh, pathway, once the pyRNAs have matured, um, we see a sequence bias where um, pyRNAs that are antisense relative to, uh, to their targets um, have a bias for a U at the one position, and uh, sense-stranded uh, pyRNAs have a bias for an adenosine at the 10 position. And this has to do with this kind of complex mechanism of biogenesis that relies on, on overlap of 10 nucleotides between the two. But ultimately, mature pyRNAs act very similarly to siRNAs. They're loaded into an argonaut-type protein, um, and they target complementary single-stranded RNAs for cleavage and ultimately degradation. So once you've moved beyond this complex biogenesis pathway, uh, you ultimately end up with a small RNA that acts very similarly to an siRNA. And so just to take a closer look at this larger pool 
of, of small RNAs, they bear all of the hallmark characteristics of bona fide pi RNAs in that they have the size that we expect, uh, they have a sequence bias where the antisense have a U1 bias and the sense have an A10 bias, and they have a strong propensity uh, for an overlap at 10 nucleotides. Boy. All right, so we had several questions that we wanted to address in this talk. One is, is the pyRNA pathway actually antiviral? Just because we see these uh, signatures of pyRNAs doesn't mean that they're actually acting against the virus. Uh, what's the mechanism of biogenesis? And lastly, because we know that the pyRNA pathway is generally thought to be involved in only germline uh, defense, is this actually relevant uh, in vivo? So I'm from UCSF, so we started with a screen uh, in order to identify uh, uh, members of the, the peewee family that may be involved in antiviral defense, and we immediately found uh, one such gene, peewee 4, which strongly antagonized uh, GFP, or its knockdown uh, resulted in a severe increase in GFP expression from a Simbis eGFP uh, virus. So we confirmed that it does in fact restrict viral replication by knocking it down and infecting with wild-type Simbis virus. Um, and we found that this is a general uh, antiviral restriction factor because it acts not only against Simbis virus, but also against uh, dengue virus, which is a flavivirus. And so now we know that PV4 is an antiviral restriction factor. Uh, we were wondering what its involvement is in, in the biogenesis of these antiviral pyRNAs. So we knocked it down and performed our deep sequencing experiments. And what you can see is that when you knock down PV4, it results in, in a severe depletion of virally derived pi RNAs, as well as what we see is some reduction in virally derived siRNAs, which I'm not going to get into today. So we think that we have a pretty good handle on one part of the pi RNA pathway that's involved uh, in this antiviral de uh, defense system. Uh, and one aspect of the biogenesis. However, we were still really stuck with the fact that classically the pyRNA pathway, uh, the, the initiation of, of, of the formation of these pyRNAs requires a genomic loci. And so this is very difficult to imagine how you get this uh, from infection with an RNA virus. Um, so we were really stumped uh, until a paper came out from uh, Carla Salis lab at Pasteur Institute which basically showed that in Drosophila, during infection with RNA viruses, uh, you have the formation of uh, viral DNA that's dependent on retrotranscriptase activity endogenous to the cell and thought to come from retrotransposons. And that the formation of this viral DNA resulted in the biogenesis of virally derived siRNAs that could act in this RNAi pathway to restrict viral replication. So we thought that this fit in very perfectly uh, with our system in mosquitoes, and so we went hunting for viral DNA and, and to see if we could inhibit its formation. And so as you can see here, um, if we infect AAG2 cells uh, and treat with an RT inhibitor and then isolate RNA and DNA and, and do either genomic PCR or, or RTQ PCR, we can see the accumulation of DNA from Simbis virus. We can restrict the accumulation of, of this DNA by treating with an RT inhibitor. And the treatment of this RT inhibitor results in an increase in viral replication. And so our hypothesis would be that, that this increase in viral replication uh, is a due to a depletion of these virally derived pyRNAs. And that's exactly what we see when we do the deep sequencing experiment. Uh, you can see that treatment with AZT results in, again, a severe depletion of these virally derived pyRNAs, uh, as well as the depletion of the DNA uh, that is coming from this virus. All right, so I think we showed you know, some evidence for the mechanism of how this works in cell culture. We have a lot more that doesn't fit into this talk. Um, but we were really interested, is this actually occurring in vivo? Is this actually relevant in vivo uh, because of the germline association of the pyRNA pathway? And so in order to do these experiments, we collaborated with Carol Blair and Ken Olson at Colorado State University in order to do some in vivo experiments. We injected them with long double-stranded RNA in order to knock down PE4. Uh, infected them by blood meal with dengue virus, and then split them into two pools. One of the pools, um, we isolated live virus um, from the whole mosquito uh, and did titer uh, by plaque assay, because virologists like plaque assays. And then secondarily, um, 
we dissected the mosquitoes into the germline tissue, the ovary, as well as non-germline tissues, the midgut and carcass, which is missing the midgut and ovary. And um, they sent these samples over to me, where I did an RNA extraction and RTQPCR. And so what we find is that in the midgut, the somatic tissue, um, we see quite good knockdown of PE4, and associated with that, we see an increase in viral replication. And as well as in the midgut, we also see this effect in the carcass. Um, and then for our plaque assays, the whole mosquito, we again see an increase in viral replication associated with a knockdown of QE4. So in summary, I hope that I've shown you that the pyrene pathway is antiviral in vivo in somatic tissues in the mosquito Aedes aegypti, uh, that virally derived pyrene biogenesis occurs through the canonical pathway, just with a twist in that the loci are generated through retrotranscriptase activity from retrotransposons onto an RNA virus. Uh, with that, I'd just like to thank uh, all of the people who helped me. Sometimes I kind of feel like a mosquito preying on, on all of these wonderful collaborators. <laughs> um, but I'd like to thank Raul from my lab. Um, Michelle was incredibly helpful for generating uh, these libraries. Uh, Isabel helped me get uh, this project up off the ground, you know, basically from the start of using this cell line. Uh, Priya for help with all things dengue, the rest of the lab who are amazing. Uh, the Salee Lab for basically solving our problem for us. Um, and Colorado State for, for an amazing collaboration, uh, including Carol Blair, Ken Olson, and Irma Sanchez Vargas, who actually did all the work. And thank you for all your attention. I'm wondering what you think the relative contribution of the siRNA versus the pi RNAs are. Does the virus need to produce, or does the cell need to produce pi RNAs strictly because you have this DNA form, or is it because they, they really have some non-overlapping set of targets or, or the virus counteracts siRNA pathway or something like that? Yes, it's a really good question. What's the contribution of the siRNA pathway versus the pi RNA pathway? And there's, there's definitely interplay between the two. Um, and we're not really sure exactly what contribution comes from each side. I would say that the siRNA po pathway is probably the more dominant one as far as antiviral immunity. Um, but when you look at mapping these small RNAs, they seem to have different distributions as well as that asymmetry that I showed before. Um, and so we're trying to parse those things apart. Um, there also seems to be some involvement in the PE4 in siRNA, either biogenesis or, or stability. But there doesn't seem to be that crosstalk, the reverse direction. So we're still trying to parse out uh, a lot of those contributions. What do you know about the abundance of pyrolysis in, in the mosquito? Yeah, so for Aedes aegypti, uh, it has a large genome that has been expanded in part because of a, a tremendous increase in, in selfish genetic elements. So if you compare a diptera like Drosophila melanogaster, it has a genome um, that is 10 times smaller than Aedes aegypti. Um, and Aedes aegypti has about a 50% uh, transposon load versus Drosophila having about, I think, a 10% load. Um, and so we see uh, pi RNAs against transposons all over the mosquito, including somatic and, uh, non and germline tissues. <coughs>